All right, another question for today is 621 task scheduler. So we are, we are again, the CPU, but we're performing tasks that are given to us in, in the shape of, in the shape of uh, character arrays. So the task is uh, indicated by character letters A to Z, and they can have multiple occurrence. Uh, the, the task can be done uh, without uh, uh, obeying their original order in the array. As long as that we complete all of them, we can rearrange shuffling the order of uh, how we are com uh, complete those tasks. So each task will use uh, one time interval, uh, and uh, for each of the time interval, we can do either do one of the tasks or we can be idle. Uh, the reason that we want to be idle is that there is this requirement and the two occurrence of the same task uh, in between those there there should be n unit of uh, time intervals we are doing either some other work or uh, just be idle and we need to return the least number of intervals that we need to finish all of the given tasks the example we have here is AAA BBB uh, the cooldown uh, is uh, the cooling interval is 2 so between the two A's, uh, we need to insert a B and idle there. And it's the same for the two B's here. Uh, we insert an idle and a B and an A. That's, uh, we need to do this so that uh, we comply to these uh, cooling interval requirements. The example, uh, in for this example question, the output is eight. Um, the sequence uh, of performing task and or be idle is a b idle a b idle a b uh, we can swap the a and b to get b a idle b a idle b a uh, which is uh, satisfied which is also a valid uh, solution um, uh, sequence of uh, performing tasks uh, because the lens for that sequence is also eight but if we are swapping B and idle, uh, we will end up with a solution that's uh, one uh, higher, larger than eight. Because uh, if we swap the idle and B, the B will become too close to the second B. So we have to also swap the idle and B uh, in the second occurrence. And as a result, we need to insert an idle be, uh, just before the very last B there. So the sequence gets um, one uh, interval longer than this optimal one. So this uh, just uh, this reasoning is, show, is uh, telling us that we can perform this. We can come up with this ordering in a very greedy way, uh, being that. Uh, if we divide the timeline by into sections of m plus one uh, intervals, uh, a section of those, uh, we can we can see that uh, in each of the section we can based on the cooling uh, requirement we can only insert uh, one occurrence of the tasks uh, into one of the section. Um, so th 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 otherwise we will contradict to this cooling interval requirements. So at least uh, at most uh, one occurrence of one of the element in in one of the sections of lens m plus one and so that uh, to try to reduce the number of uh, sections we need to finish all of this task uh, the greedy way of doing this is when the sequence begin when the section begins we always uh, insert uh, allocate the f uh, you know location with the uh, current uh, task uh, that has the most uh, 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 number of occurrence so um, if we have like a a a b b b we always try to put uh, uh, the this case is tied that doesn't matter we put a here and uh, we, we then put b here uh, so but but you can imagine that um, uh, we can basically keep track of uh, uh, the frequency count of uh, tasks using a priority queue and um, uh, for each of the section, when, when we start a section, uh, we look at the, the priority queue, try to put the, the task with the highest count uh, uh, first onto that section, and just decrement the count for the task, and not immediately push it back to the uh, priority queue, uh, but rather 
uh, just temporarily store it and we will append those onto the priority queue and do a hippify once one of the section uh, completed. Uh, that's the reason for that. That that reason is because uh, the uh, we can only have one occurrence of one of the uh, the task in one of the section. So just imagine that uh, we basically have this maximum uh, max priority queue, uh, with the elements be the frequency count for the task and the task uh, uh, identifier on the priority queue for each of the section. Uh, we uh, extract uh, the element with the maximum number of occurrence and put the indicator onto the task list and uh, decrement the count for that uh, task and temporarily store it on, in some collection and decrement a counter for the number of slots we need to fill in for that section. Once the counter reaches zero, um, we can uh, you know, put those temporarily stored uh, tuples, frequency, and the indicator count back to the priority queue and the hippify, um, re, uh, you know, try to regain the uh, heap order, max heap order. Just repeat this process to build up this, priority, uh, this task uh, list uh, ordering uh, and just return the length of that. Um, so that's uh, a, a way of solving this problem using priority queue. So uh, because it's a priority queue, um, uh, it, it's pro probably going to be something like uh, uh, n log k uh, in, in terms of uh, time complexity. Um, I think the k is going to be the unique number of tasks n is the uh, n is uh, probably uh, linear with respect of uh, uh, the maximum the length of this array so that's um, uh, the probably the time I think that's the time complexity for the uh, priority queue solution for this question uh, so in terms of space um, obviously we have to keep track of the priority queue, uh, which is, uh, has a, a size of k, number of unique uh, tasks we have. Um, another better uh, solution is to uh, directly calculate this. Yes, we can do this. Uh, I, I don't think it's um, um, very easy to prove this in an interview setting. Uh, you probably would just want to go with the priority queue solution uh, because it's a uh, uh, it, it, it's a um, you know reasonable way of approach this. Um, you're greatly trying to offload your your biggest trouble, uh, and uh, the code can be can be still quite complex. Uh, so it, it's a way of showing that uh, you you are able able to uh, solve this kind of uh, manage this kind of complexity. Uh, if you can be able to uh, sh prove something on the board on the whiteboard uh, maybe the mathematical calculation direct calculation may be better for you uh, I'm not gonna draw pictures uh, I, I don't have a pen so I'm just gonna uh, talk about uh, what the big idea behind the mass solution for this uh, the the big idea is that we still basically divide the, the time uh, timestamp and uh, you know the timeline into sections and the, in, the intuition from that greedy solution carries over as well uh, the number of uh, sections we need it's uh, pretty much determined by um, the mm, the, fre the frequency of the uh, tasks the maximum frequency of the task so for because we have three a's here um, uh, we pretty much have to have at least uh, uh, two of those uh, uh, sections of lens three to finish the uh, uh, you know uh, frequency minus one occurrence of the task A and in the very last uh, section uh, we we just perform the very last of A so the number of uh, intervals we need it is uh, the uh, maximum frequency of the task multiply uh, minus one uh, you know just 
complete uh, all but one of that uh, uh, that task. Um, so that's uh, two multiplied by this uh, the length of the sections, which is m plus one. Uh, the cooldown plus one so that's uh, two multiplied by three we get six and in the very last section we need to complete a uh, if uh, we have another task is that of the same lens uh, we need to also complete the occurrence of that task so so the we have a nice uh, mathematical formulation to calculate this uh, that's on the case um, th that's um, quite uh, general the case Another situation when this is uh, potentially not doable is that uh, uh, when we have um, uh, the number of unique tasks that's uh, larger than uh, this number here. Uh, so if we have uh, something like a CCC and DDD uh, insert into the task list while the N is still 2, um, for each of the sections uh, what we gonna end up with if we using the priority queue maximum priority queue uh, the, the solution we come up with will be DCB and in the rare section uh, we couldn't start with D because the A has a, a higher frequency so it's DC a uh, DCBA DC uh, that's the second section uh, BA D See, uh, sorry, I lose track of, but you get an idea. We, we're basically doing, um, uh, we, we end up with a sequence of lens that's equal to the lens of the array. So that's the uh, another case. So, yeah, it really depends on the uh, number of occurrence for different uh, element count. The worst case is that uh, when we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have the case that uh, we, we couldn't uh, uh, decrement uh, the lens of the most frequent one by at least the one for every uh, section we're gonna end up with uh, having to return the lens of the whole thing as the as the worst case uh, but for any other case uh, uh, if we can always uh, at least the decrement uh, the frequency of uh, the most frequent one by one in every section that that means that the uh, frequency count of the this uh, tasks is less than the interval uh, plus one uh, the less than the length of the section we can uh, the, that formula we just uh, derived uh, sort of loosely derived is going to be the most optimal so let's just code this mathematical uh, solution uh, up. Uh, task cons is equal to move myself over to save some space. Uh, so we count the number of you. Uh, basically come, uh, count the frequency for each of the tasks in the input array. We get the, the max frequency of the task. Um, just uh, max task uh, counts values. And uh, we try to get the number of tasks that's uh, with the same number of maximum frequency. Uh, so the the formula for the minimum number of intervals uh, is equal to this max of frequency multi minus one and uh, multiply that by the length of each section and then uh, how many how many uh, such task with the same maximum number of frequency we have to finish all those residual works in the very last frequency that's the minimum case and uh, uh, 
we either return this or um, a maximum between this number and the length of tasks. Um, the, on the condition that um, the number of unique tasks we have is uh, compare that to the length of the section. So this this will be the uh, you know, mathematical solutions that uh, uh, pretty much the linear time, which is the go through the task list, the calculating the frequency. Uh, that, that's uh, that's just the, the only on, uh, linear. So th this this mathematical solution is uh, linear in time, uh, and uh, in terms of space, uh, this is uh, the number of unique uh, unique tasks. So yeah, so the space for uh, storing these things is number of unique elements in these tasks. So if it's A to Z, it's guaranteed to be order of uh, 26. So it's uh, you can consider this constant. Uh, so on that note, in the heap solution, uh, the space for the heap is can be also be considered as constant. Uh, that's you know order of 26 to be maximum. So uh, yeah, I think this is the code. Let me submit it to see if it works. Yeah, it works. Uh, okay, so that's the question for today. Uh, bye for now.